Capital One. You know in Chicago, the Irish are gonna turn out for the defending national champs. It's been all chalk so far in the Sweet 16. Can Notre Dame continue that trend against the four seed Texas A&M? The winner of this one plays on Monday night against the winner of our last Sweet 16 showdown, Stanford and Missouri State. Beth Bowens, Debbie Antonelli, and Courtney Lyle, as well as some of the game's great scorers, Debbie. I like to call them ticket-selling players. Would you buy a ticket to see Enrique Ogumuwale or Jackie Young? You absolutely will. This is one of the most dynamic, balanced, fast-paced offenses we've ever seen. And for Texas A&M, this might be the best scorer left in the tournament. She is outstanding. Kennedy Carter, a sophomore, led the SEC in scoring. She can make every shot. She can make every play. And almost a guarantee to drop 30 on the Irish today if she continues what she's been doing in her NCAA tournament career. And the starting lineups for A&M and Notre Dame, and in particular, for this Notre Dame lineup, Debbie, it could go down as one of the best starting fives we've ever seen in the history of the game. Well, let's face it, Beth, we have never in the history of women's basketball and on the men's side seen any team that can score the way the Irish can score. 9,905 career points total by their five starters. They are explosive, they're electric, they're up-tempo, they're balanced, they share the ball, and they are fun to watch. And that means a tough task for Texas A&M, but when they've got Kennedy Carter, they've got a chance, right, Courtney? Oh, that is right, Beth. She is one of those ticket-selling players that Debbie loves. And how could she not be? She's averaging over 30 points per game in the NCAA tournament for her career. But it was actually two games in the SEC tournament where Texas A&M didn't have her because of injury. And they learned a lot about themselves. Who else would step up? It was a great learning opportunity. But the good news is she is back for the tournament now. And we caught her before the game writing an acronym on her leg. It stands for you know what time it is. Well, it's Sweet 16 time. And she's a big time player. This is a big time stage. Tick tock, tick tock. She is now on the clock in a showdown with Notre Dame for a spot in the Elite Eight in what we, we might just refer to as the champions bracket. We have three national championship programs here with Notre Dame, Texas A&M, and Stanford. And then our fourth team, Missouri State, features head coach Kelly Jolly, who won three titles as a player at Tennessee. Kennedy Carter at the top of the Irish scouting report. Now, Notre Dame likes to play a lot of zone. They'll play some man. They'll play some junk. Kennedy Carter has the capability of scoring against all of that. And, Beth, she's going to have to get, like, 37 for them to win. A&M in the dark jerseys. The Irish feeling right at home here in Chicago in their home whites as the top seed in the region. And it is Carter who will have it for Texas A&M. Texas A&M has won seven of their last eight. They are a balanced offensive team. On the top of the floor, Kayla Wells is their best three-point shooter with the ball right here. And get used to seeing these starting lineups. Neither side has a ton of depth. These guys will get a lot of minutes. Washington misses on the first attempt. She had the huge three at the end of their second round win, the game winner for AM. Ogumbawale's first shot is off the mark as you check out the starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Nice little drag screen, Kennedy Carter just off the mark, but she'll seek shots. She is a tremendous shot maker for Texas AM. Fascinating matchup of an Irish side that can score at all five spots against the shooter extraordinaire in Carter today. And the greatest challenge for Texas A&M is to try to slow down the Irish. It's a task that not many have been able to manage. And because of the balance of Notre Dame and the tempo that they play with, it makes them one of the toughest teams to knock out of the tournament right now. You see how A&M will use some of the shot clock and try to get the ball to Kennedy Carter in a late clock situation. Kayla Wells off the bounce, just beats the shot clock buzzer for two. Notre Dame will go into their Princeton stuff. They call it chin. That's why you see Mabry with her hand on her chin. 
Nice bounce pass down to the short corner, and Jackie Young, the lone non-senior in this lineup, but Jackie could go pro. It's possible that all five Irish starters are drafted into the WNBA next year. Carter splits the defenders, doesn't get the bounce. And the Irish will come out with it. They are at their best in transition. Everybody fills a lane. Everybody knows exactly where to go. And the foul down low on Kennedy Carter, her first. There is the two-time national championship winning head coach for the Irish, Muffet McGraw. And Gary Blair, the one championship in 2011 was against Notre Dame in the final. And a 30-point performance for Danielle Adams to beat Skylar Diggins and the Irish. Gary Blair knows his team is going to get shots. They move the ball well. They've got enough offense. The issue is trying to slow down Notre Dame. Notre Dame will put a lot of pressure on you with their offense, but their defense isn't anything that you need to be scared of. And Texas A&M knows that. That's why Kennedy Carter's got to have a huge game for them. Wells off the bounce, blocked by Brianna Turner, the three-time Defensive Player of the Year in the ACC. Agumboale back to Turner. Off the mark and a good box out for Sierra Johnson, the sophomore out of Duncanville, Texas. Again, off the drag, and Kennedy Carter this time holds the follow-through. That's what time it is right there, Beth. Oh, she wants to entertain that crowd. I think I believe the uh, the hand was pointing towards midnight a little bit on mm -hmm. that follow through. Turner gets the shot blocked by India Jones. Kennedy Carter told me before the game she had something special for us. Let's see. Carter trying to weave her way through the defense. It was a different approach. Kennedy Carter said, heck yeah, I get fired up to play against Notre Dame and a score like Enrique Agumbawale. Notre Dame talked about, ah, it's not personal. We just got to go out and do what we have to do to get the W. So a little different approach, at least verbalizing to the media. We'll yeah. see what happens if Carter starts lighting them up a bit. Oh, yeah. Little man-to-man -man defense this time by a and They will change it up a little. They'll show zone, they'll switch to man. Gary Blair's team's always well prepared. Irish have started out just one for six from the floor. And this is totally a and tempo. Walking the ball up the floor. The Irish not getting anything in transition. Carter off the cross and gonna be called for an offensive foul and that's her second. And she looks over to Gary Blair and says, Duh, I got this, I can stay out there. That's a tough angle from here. Did she duck the shoulder? She may have, and she got called for a second. She'll stay in the game as Shepard hits from just outside the key. Gary Blair initially got someone off the bench and sat her back down. So it looks like Carter can stay. Well, here's the thing. Gary Blair knows he can't win the game with Kennedy Carter not yeah. on the floor. So it's sort of like as the Irish get their high-low game going in their transition, their post players run ahead of the ball, and they are easy targets with the size on the perimeter for Notre Dame. But here's the thing, like Brad Stevens for the Celtics, he doesn't worry about the two-foul rule. Okay, He's the head coach for the Celtics. He says the guys are going to play. They understand. They're going to play like a veteran player. Gary Blair has some faith and some trust in Kennedy Carter. Five minutes gone, a and with the early lead. Knocked out of bounds. You mentioned scorers down low. Jess Shepard has 2,000 points. Brianna Turner's getting close to that. Kennedy Carter out to the good start, but a couple of early fouls as the Irish look to try and push the tempo. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's it? 9 8 AM with the lead. Kennedy Carter, five shots in five minutes, but also two fouls. Okay, referee the defense, Beth, because that's what the officials will tell you. Did she push off? Because Marina Mabry was moving. 
I don't like it because that's two fouls on Kennedy Carter, and Gary Blair is going to keep her in because he knows he can't win the game without her. They'll throw a double team at her. The skip to Kayla Wells. So we, we may see a situation like NC State wanted to turn Megan Gustafson in a passer, into a passer. Can Notre Dame do the same thing as Jess Shepard cleans it up weak side for her first bucket? Well, here's where A&M has to keep their composure, right? I mean, they have got to get to the offensive glass. They've got to attack the free throw line area against this 2-3 zone. And they are a really good offensive rebounding team, but they haven't been able to get to the glass, and that's a turnover and a gift back. And you've got numbers right here, but see, that's the tempo. Gary Blair doesn't want to attack on a three-on-two opportunity. We talked about attacking on turnovers uh, out top and on long rebounds where your guards have an advantage in numbers. Nice dish, and Asia Ellison with the lane. Foul down low. There's the double team and the cross court pass. And then that's just great bounce, a lucky bounce, if you will. I thought the luck was supposed to go the Irish's way. <laughs> Shepard to the free throw line. 71% on the season, misses the first. Jess Shepard has had an incredible year in terms of her ability to score inside, run ahead of the basketball in transition. Her high post game is very solid. She has three-point range, and Muffet McGraw told us that she was a three-point shooter when she was at Nebraska before she transferred. She does have the green light from outside the arc. And the Irish can hurt you at the free throw line. They have attempted more free throws than anybody in the country, made the second most in the nation. Carter for three, rattles it in and out. Offensive rebound and the stick back for Sierra Johnson. And that's the first offensive rebound, and that is great ball movement by AM. Reverse it, and mistake by the Irish to leave. Kennedy Carter wide open, and Johnson gets to the glass. Mabry drops it off for Shepard. Second chance is good. About 20 assists per game. 60% of their buckets are assisted for the Irish. That's top five in the country. We got a little junk defense right here. How about a little triangle and two? Jackie Young on Kennedy Carter. Arike Gumbawale on Kayla Wells. Weak side blocked by Turner. That's her second swat. And she led the ACC in block shots, and most of the shots she blocks, she blocks into their transition game, like this. Wale off the cross, and the feed to Shepard. Even when you think you're back, the Irish are putting pressure on you off the bounce all the time. They're always looking to attack the shoot area, Beth. The free throw lane extended, the middle of the floor, that middle lane is where they do most of their damage offensively. Carter with Jackie Young on her defensively. Deep three, got it over Young. Carter with eight here in the quarter. And that's why you roll the dice and leave her on the floor with two fouls because you have to trust her because she can make those kind of plays. Nagumbuwale. Just her second shot attempt of the quarter, and Enrique knocks it down. The Irish all-time leading scorer. Again, the screen right on the elbow, right on the edge of that shoot area, and she's able to come off that with a strong one-dribble move. Carter, always moving without the ball, long on that shot. Young attacking Carter, who had to get out of the way with the two fouls. And then Kennedy got a strip. Three on two, and Washington mishandled and ends up with the layup. The Irish thought it should have been a turnover. AM back up by one. Final minute of this first quarter. Sweet 16 here in Chicago. 
Shepard off the ball, fake to Turner in traffic. Their interior passing is better than anybody else in the country. There's no one that passes the ball like Shepard and Turner. Great chemistry inside. Last possession here for AM. Washington with the shot clock off. And they turn it over, and Carter didn't have a touch. And now Gary Blair will wisely get Kennedy out of the game so she doesn't pick up a right. cheap one here. Yeah, surprised that the Irish haven't been able to get another foul mm -hmm. on her because you would think they would go right at her. Plenty of time for Notre Dame. Agumbawale across midcourt. Arike with the crossover to the left. The lob to Turner who lays it up and in. Tremendous execution by the seniors. Kennedy Carter with the shot clock running down deep from outside the arc. And then the Irish, great touch pass, good finish. Welcome back to Chicago, joined by Texas A&M head coach Gary Blair. Coach, what was it about Kennedy Carter that you trusted her to leave her in the game with two fouls? It's called Notre Dame's talent. We can't wait for the second half. We got to trust her. She knows the game. That was probably a no call on the second foul, first one she earned. But we earned the charge down here that wasn't given. I love the tempo of the game. We've got to stop their inside play. We're rotating over to help. We don't need to help. One post stay on the post, the other post stay on the other one. But I love the tempo, and uh, I think we're playing pretty well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. How about Kennedy Carter? Three of eight in that first quarter. How about Kennedy Carter? She can make every shot. A little drag, sticks a triple, gets her defender up in the air, drives past Brianna Turner, the tremendous shot blocker, and then late in the shot clock, time and score. Wants the ball, wants to make big plays. Irish have been pounding it inside, and they continue to do so here. Shepard and Turner now have 19 points for the Irish. And the Irish are going to stay in that triangle in two, Beth. And they went right at Kennedy Carter offensively, which is exactly what they should be doing. Jackie Young drawing the assignment on Carter. And the drive by Washington getting baseline for two. Very much like we saw Iowa today make others making plays yeah. besides Megan Gustafson. The other cast for A&M is going to have to play big. They're shooting 50% so far as Mabry misses from three-point land. Bothered by a knee injury the last couple of games. She has not been herself. Carter launches and hits. A big screen outside. Not Jackie Young out of the play. And she is still down at midcourt. Jackie Young had no awareness of that transition screen. And that's the screener's defense's responsibility. So someone should have been telling Jackie Young there was a screen coming, but Kennedy Carter didn't hesitate, did she? Young, the junior out of Princeton, Indiana. That's and a legal screen. Solid by India Jones, yeah. yeah. Kennedy Carter ready to score. So Carter, who has started out four of nine with J uh, Young on her quite a bit. Now Jackie is out, and Abby Prohaska will come on. So we'll see what kind of adjustment that means for Notre Dame's defense on Carter. And also significant for Notre Dame moving forward with Young on the bench. Well, now I'm wondering if the Irish will stay in the triangle in two because Jackie Young was a part of the man-to-man -man part of that triangle. She's their best defender. Agumbawale off the mark from deep. So now Marina Mabry is going to be on Kennedy Carr. Now they switch to Enrique. They're just doing a staying in that triangle and two and just bumping off defenders on her. But Prohaska has got Kayla Wells. 
first foul on Mabry. And Notre Dame's men's ice hockey team gets ready to take on UMass with a spot on the Frozen Four on the line. That's tonight at 6.30 Eastern on ESPNU and on the app. Don't forget to visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. The Irish winning in overtime yesterday. Washington, third block for Brianna Turner. Inside Shepard, they are dominating down low right now. They are a downhill offense, and if you don't get pressure on the ball early, you allow Marina Mabry to see right to the rim. Carter weaving her way through a couple of defenders and gets the bounce. Beth, if you think she's going to get tired, I'm just going to let you know. She is not going to not get tired. Does Kennedy not run out of gas. Oh. She, in, look at she's jawing a little look, bit, too. Not in this environment. She ain't afraid to tell you how well she's playing. Agumbawale with the response. Arike won't shy away from a verbal no. exchange or two. Neither one, Arike or Kennedy, can you knock off their line. They are both very physical offensive players. Mm -hmm. They're strong to the rim. They are two of the highest volume shooters in the Power Five leagues. They're gonna get their shots up. Agumbawale with the weak side rebound. See, this is where you gotta stop the ball right now. It's too late. Ooh, Carter, gotta be careful with the two fouls. Got it knocked loose. What a competitor is Kennedy Carter. Good news for Notre Dame. Jackie Young will return to the floor. Carter will check out for Texas A&M. Well, of the starters for Notre Dame, Enrique Agumbawale and Jackie Young are the two players that average 31 or 32 minutes a game. So they both can play, and Enrique doesn't mind getting to the elbow for that nice-looking pull-up mid-range jump shot. Enrique now with six on three of five shooting. And Notre Dame out in front by four. Where does the scoring come now for a &M without Carter in the lineup? And another ticky-tack foul on Prohaska. You watch this. Two strong dribbles. That is all you need in a quarter court. What a nice job by Enrique Gumbawale to pull up and hit that jump shot. Not over-penetrate, a shot she's capable of making, and a shot she's made a million times. No, we didn't have to wonder for long where the scoring would come from. Carter right back into the game. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gary Blair kind of toy with offense-defense possessions, even at this point in the game. Jones off the window for a couple. They run that old Louisiana Tech overload play, and that's a play that India Jones has to score on. She had an isolation. She's got to be able to score on that. Jackie Young fouled on the drive. That'll be on Jones. That's her first. Watch this clear out right here. You see it's all alone for Jones, and she just splits the defender, gets to the front of the rim. Nice take by Jones. The rest of the Aggies, being other than Kennedy Carter, they continue to shoot around 50%, which is a great sign for A&M. And A&M has not been to the free throw line, which is not a good sign for them. The Irish are getting to the line, and they've had multiple players to the line, which is... Part of the reason why they're so balanced, Beth. They have so many ways they can beat you offensively. Carter launches the deep three. She continues to shoot right over the top of Irish defenders who don't get out far enough. Does she not make you chuckle? I mean, come on, this is fun. Wow. Agumbawale with the catch. Fresh 30 here for the Irish. Shepard. Big first half for Jess. She got 15 already. Courtney? Well, guys, I want to take you back to the ACC tournament because remember, Muffet McGraw had talked to us about this team having trouble shutting down those star players on other teams. She's been emphasizing it since that tournament with this group, and it's all about awareness, knowing where she is. But right now, Kennedy Carter has got 16 points. Look, Muffet McGraw has won two national championships. She understands you have to play some D. But look at Prohaska, hands down. You're, she's thinking, nah, this isn't her range. Guess what? In the gym's her range. 
And, you know, I know Coach McGraw is going to be concerned about her defense, but I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of offense to stop. Yeah. You've got to be able to score with the Irish. Mabry. Still can't quite dial it in here in the NCAA tournament. She's their all-time leader, career three-pointers made. Carter, short on the shot, good rebounding position down low for Jones. And Gary Blair is wondering why there wasn't a foul on that attempt by Kennedy Carter. I'll tell you what, Coach Blair is as animated as I've seen him in a yeah. long time over there on the sideline. He kept telling us yesterday, I just got to get the game to the second half. Working inside, Turner. You got to make Brianna Turner score on a turnaround jump shot. Make her make a post move because she scores on putbacks, rim runs, drop offs, lobs. Carter keeping the dribble alive. Another offensive board. And this time it's Shepard that comes out with it. Agumbo Wale off to the races. That crossover. Scoop shot won't go. And the breakaway here for AM while Notre Dame was arguing why there wasn't a foul. And three Aggies beat him up the floor. Under four minutes to go here in the first half. Nice. Really nice pass. And so that's what you have to do, though, Beth. You got to get the game slower, like AM has done, and you need to make the Irish run offense. It's exactly what Gary Blair has done, and Kennedy Carter has made enough shots to keep this as a one possession game. Jones finds Johnson. Rebound Shepard, and here comes Notre Dame again. Mabry drops it off for Agumba Wale. The burst to the bucket off the mark. Jackie Young. Enrique will try for three. Wow, Enrique airs way it out. off. Jackie Young, no. Multiple opportunities, and the Irish are wanting numbers. Jones will finish. They are beating Notre Dame at their own game right now. Beating them up the floor. And a one-point Aggie lead late in this first half. You know, you know Coach Landers. Blair is a volume talker. It's not how quickly he speaks, it's how long he can go. <laughs> he can go the full 40. Listen, you guys are right. It is a lot of fun being over here at courtside. We're so close, we could get sweat on us. We're having so much fun. Big deal for a &M. They are even in the paint, and they have more fast break points than Notre Dame. Kennedy Carter with 16. Shepard and Turner have combined for 25 for Notre Dame. And Enrique and Brianna Turner are taking a seat, and Gary Blair is calling for the travel, and he's right. Good job over there, Coach Blair. Debbie, you mentioned how Gary wanted to get it into the second half close, but of course, in Coach Blair's speak, it's we need to get into their collar. Well, he's gotten into their collar, and he's starting to make the Irish sweat a little bit and feel like this game's a little bit too tight. Well, look, look, this is the way you know that you're making the right decisions. Notre Dame has to go to their junk defense in the first quarter, and he's forced Muffet McGraw to call a timeout. Those are winning situations for A&M. This is the first of our uh, Sweet 16 matchups here in Chicago. The final Sweet 16 matchup of the tournament is coming up next. The two-seed Stanford and the Cinderella, 11-seed Lady Bears of Missouri State. Back in the Sweet 16 for the first time since the days of Jackie Stiles in 2001. That's coming up next and also available on your ESPN app. It's been all chalk so far, Debbie. The top two seeds advancing in the other three regions. And one opportunity right here for Sierra Johnson. Sierra Johnson, the transfer from Louisville, does a terrific job with a little up fake. Look at the deep position on the duck in right here on an out-of-bounds play. 
that is going to upset Muffin McGraw because that is a poor defensive possession for the Irish. You know, Courtney Lyle talked about it in the open, how it could be a good thing that A&M had to play without Kennedy in the SEC tournament. It boosted the confidence of everybody else, and today everybody else is playing very well for the Aggies, not just Carter. Well, they got the game in the tempo that they need it to be to have a chance. Look at that strong post up by Turner. Gets early position, good defense to knock it away. It's an 8-2 run right now for a and a Look, minute and a half to go. Neither one of these teams want this game to be very physical, right? I mean, it doesn't favor either one of them because they don't have the depth in the bench. No. Back to Mabry from Agumbawale, and she knocks it down. Her first triple of the NCAA tournament. No Kennedy Carter, by the way, perhaps for the rest of the half for a and with the two fouls. I think Gary Blair on a chance to put her in on an offensive possession yep. will put her back in. Off the drive, well wow. strong to the rim with the left hand. What a take right through the middle of the Irish zone. Iverson cut by Enrique, who prefers Kobe. And one for Agumboale. Much better in rhythm jumper by Enrique. Watch this right here, a little screen by Shepard. And Enrique is always thinking shot first, pass second. That's part of the reason why she's the best scorer in the history of Notre Dame basketball. Over 2,500 career points. That's good for number one at Notre Dame. Fourth best in ACC history. Misses the free throw. See if they get Carter a touch here and what might be their final possession of the half. Young running with her defensively. Carter, pull up, baseline, short. Rebound to the Irish, six seconds, the differential. Shot clock and game clock. Enrique doesn't worry about that, pulls up and hits. Yeah, the last two shots for Enrique and her scoring has come right around the pinch, right around the elbow in the mid-range. Those are outstanding shots for her to take, and Kennedy might not give this one back up. Mm, nope. 15 lead changes in this first half. Can Carter get one more for AM? Carter will pull up mid range. No good. Johnson with time got the stick back to even up the score at the break. the line all knotted up 42 all a and m and notre dame and courtney lyle right now has kennedy carter kennedy in that first half you had two fouls how did you stay disciplined to not pick up more early on stay within our system trying to defend without fouling simple What's working for this team right now to stick with the defending national champion? They're so worried about me. We're moving the ball and I'm getting my teammates open. I'm taking good shots. They're finding me and we're working together. Thanks. Uh -huh. Carter with 16 in the first half and her mates carrying their weight as well. All even at the break. Now to Maria and the gang in the studio. Mentioned by Capital One. Sweet 16 here in Chicago, all tied up as we get set to start the second half. Notre Dame and Texas A&M sitting courtside. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli and Courtney Lyle. The Irish able to pound the ball inside in that first half. Texas A&M, plenty of Kennedy Carter, plenty of the others doing their jobs. We need a little more Kennedy Carter, I would say, if a and going to pull the upset. And they need to do a better job of getting on them early in transition. This is why Notre Dame is executing in the quarter court. They're, Brianna Turner is going to set us. 
set a screen, a rescreen. There's a dribble handoff, and then she turns the corner, does Arike, gets to the paint, and does a terrific job of getting inside. Now, Kennedy Carter is going to come off a dribble handoff here. She's going to turn the corner. She's going to get into the second level and attack Brianna Turner and get to the rim. This is how AM has been able to get some successful possessions. Underway in this third quarter, Agumbawale with the pull up no. Shepard gets him another opportunity, and Arike able to knock it down. She had 10 in the first half. Shepard and Turner combined for 25. Texas A&M getting 16 from Carter and 26 from the rest of the Aggies. Carter attacking Turner, able to bother the shot. Agumbawale had it knocked loose, and right there is Turner to Shepard for a bucket. Yeah. And a quick timeout for Texas A&M. Yeah, the downhill, the pressure of the offense, the ability to attack. When they tilt the court like that, that is too much to defend. A really good timeout early by Gary Blair to get his team refocused. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. You know, we're set for the opening tip. Adams tries that fadeaway again and buries it. Daniel Adams has had an All-American night. White, quick shot. Yes! Texas A&M is the 2011 champion. And for the first time... Yeah, Gary Blair cutting down the nets that year at the expense of the Fighting Irish behind Danielle Adams' 30-point performance. Looking for another big upset here. Can they get past the number one seed in the region? Carter short on that shot. And you want to talk about a quick timeout, Debbie. He was taking no chances after two baskets he called the T.O. Well, because Muffet McGraw's team came out of the locker room, and they are upping the tempo. They are picking up their energy. They are looking to transition. They're not going to be walking the ball off the floor in the second half. 6-0 run for the Irish. And the biggest lead for either side today. Winner advances to face the winner of our second game here, Stanford and Missouri State in the region final on Monday night. Carter short on her first couple of attempts here in the second half. She missed her first two shots in the first half as well. She's getting warmed up, Beth. Shepard drops it off for Turner again. The interior passing for the Irish second to none. You just can't overhelp. You've got to be able to keep the ball in front of you. And this is what Gary Blair wanted. His offense in front of his bench in the second half with a chance. Eight unanswered out of the locker room for Notre Dame. Jess Shepard really battling inside against Sierra Johnson for position. Four on the shot clock. The strip by Mabry. One second here for Texas A&M. Watch this great pass. She draws the help. Shepard one bounce, understands that she's going to draw Jones, and then just drops it off for an easy two for Turner. Carter, good if it goes. Oh. Got it. Oh. And the shoulders shake they after gotta, the make. They got to take a look at that. Look at this quick catch and shoot. The elevation over the wow, shot blocker. That's wow, that's close. I don't think they're going to have video footage to change that. It was that close. It's got to be indisputable evidence to reverse it. How exciting is Kennedy Carter? Look at this shot. I think. Oh, it's close. It is really close. Boy, if anything, there is a fingertip touching. Clock when light When that light horn. goes on, yeah. Clock light horn. And all we've got here is light. Great job by our crew here to get another look at 
That's the order that the officials evaluate. Clock, the light, the horn. Well, it's big for Texas A&M just to find their footing a little bit here early in this third quarter. The Irish have that ability to just wipe you out quickly if you can't counter and score with them. Look at the elevation on the jumper. Now the clock comes into play too on this replay. Now just remember for those at home, DV Sports where they look at in the monitor doesn't always have the same angles that TV has. They're going to count it. Two points. So Carter now with 18 to lead the way for a and And what an emotional lift, right, for yes. a and What yeah. a huge play. You got one on the shot clock. You got your best shot blocker. And Kennedy Carter scores over the top. That ends the 8-0 run. Shepard again looking for Turner, broken up by Carter. This is Kennedy Carter's pace as well, Beth, because she likes to run, but she doesn't want to get tired. Okay, so you can't wear her down. Takes a little screen up top. This one's Whoa. going up. Betwixt the legs, short. Notre Dame with the push and with numbers. Agumbawale, nobody tracks the ball on the break. Easy for Enrique. You have to stop the Irish before they get past midcourt. The transition defense right now is it being challenged for AM. That's why the Irish are scoring so easily. Shepard got the block, and then Turner gets another one. Four blocks, three into transition. One allows them to set their defense. Nine blocks through the first two rounds, four more for Brianna Turner, who had to watch. Remember, she was hurt out last year as the Irish made it all the way to the championship and won it all. And so Turner wants to play an integral role this year for the Irish on their quest. Well, when you ask Muffet McGraw about watching Brianna Turner this year, she'll tell you it's been a lot of fun to see her back on the court. And she also told me that watching her block a shot is one of her favorite things to do during a game. Ogumbawale can't knock that down. I like watching her block shots, too, because she is an unselfish shot blocker. She's not going for the highlight. She's going for the transition opportunity. Yeah. An assist, a block assist, if you will. Carter using the screen, gets some space and hits. I don't and know. And a little chatter to Enrique on the way down the floor. Here we go with Carter. I don't know anybody who shoots the ball with that kind of arc. We asked her about it yesterday. She said it's just the way she learned how to score. She had to be able to score over taller players. 21 for Carter. And Kennedy saying, hey, whoa, slow it down here. Let's get it back to our tempo. They After the 8-0 Irish run, it's six straight for A&M. Hey, you get the switch right here. It's a great play call by Gary Blair. And he wants the foul. And Carter just picked up her third. He, she's frustrated because she didn't get the call. She's got to have more discipline than that. Let Gary Blair handle the officials. Watch right here. Right into the shot blocker. That play starts outside the lower defensive box. You're not allowed the principal verticality oh. inside the arc, Beth. And they dodged a bullet there. It's on India Jones instead, her second. So Carter stays with just two fouls. Collision in front of the Notre Dame bench. Mabry got twisted up. Sierra Johnson with the foul. Mabry's tough. Oh, the ankle got caught underneath and then the knee as well. She's going to stay in there. She's going to shake it off. South Jersey, not a Belmar. 
Followed her in her sister Michaela's footsteps to Notre Dame. Weak side rebound and one Shepard. Maybe the most improved player in the country this year. And the draft stock is rising for Jess. 21 for Shepard. And Jones just picked up her third. Weak side, Shepard counting. Jessica Shepard with the double-double. And four assists to go with it. This is a terrific duck in. Then she makes herself available on the penetrations. Does a terrific job of getting great position. Strong around the rim. And also a terrific passer. She's got the high post game. She's got it all. She dropped 30 plus pounds entering into the season and it has helped her WNBA stock significantly. Three offensive rebounds and putbacks for Shepard as she converts the three point play there. And the Irish are up five, under five to go in the third. She's got 22, Kennedy Carter with 21 for a and m Carter, short. Offensive rebound, Johnson, and a foul on Turner. Sierra Johnson does a great job of pump faking every time she gets an offensive rebound. Well, tune in Friday at 6.30 Eastern. It's the NCAA Women's Final Four Special presented by Capital One. And then it's the National Semifinals at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 with the championship in prime time on Sunday night. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's our national titles for the four coaches here. Two for Tyron Muffet, one for Gary, and then three as a player for Kelly Harper, formerly Kelly Jolly, who played with the three Meeks for Pat Summit. And that 1998 national championship team, that was one of the best starting fives in the history of the game. So was this one for the Irish. Really good call by Muffet McGraw. You get Arike Gumbawale with a nice duck in. She's capable of scoring on a lot of different sets for Notre Dame. And this high ball screen right here has resulted in a switch. And that's why Gary Blair keeps running it, because he'll take his, the percentages of Kennedy Carter making an adjustment and being able to score on that. She's had an open look. She hasn't yeah. been able to convert on that high ball screen. This time he brings two screens. Six for eight from beyond the line for Kennedy Carter and 24 points. Got a foul on the reach in by Ellison. And watch right here. Here comes a drag right here, and then there's another drag coming. And then you get the switch. Enrique late going over the top. Jess Shepard, or Brianna Turner doesn't step up. Carter gets great vision to the rim. Already over her season average. Agumbawale tough on the fade. When you talk about Kennedy Carter averaging over 30 points per game in her two seasons in the NCAA tournament. Only Elena Deladon and Cheryl Swoops can brag of that. Here's Agumbawale with the steal, the dish. Offensive foul on Enrique. Couldn't put on the brakes. It's her first. It's a terrific job of getting back in transition defense, and that's Kayla Wells doing an awesome job in transition. That's one defensive play they've made. And here comes again, the same set. Gary Blair's not going to overcoach it, right? Yeah, Kennedy Carter said, we'll keep running the same thing until they stop it. Finds a lane down the middle, and a patient whistle on the drive as Carter is fouled. That'll be on Shepard, her first, and I think that's going to be a shooting foul here coming up for Kennedy. They've only been to the free throw line three times today. Kennedy Carter is close to 200 attempts on the season. Well, now all the Irish starters have one personal foul. And with the four block shots that Turner has and the aggressiveness of Shepard on the interior, they can start to be a little bit more aggressive defensively in that ball screening action.
Carter now with 26. Arike looking to respond. No. Last touched by AM. Jackie Young will check back into the game for the Irish here. Mabry will go out. Jackie Young has been patient about her offense today. She really hasn't gotten that many shots up. She's only taken four. Shepard, no. Young, weak side. Second chance, no. Third chance, Shepard, yes. So strong and athletic on the glass. And that's what I'm talking about. No foul issue. Go hard to the boards. Be more aggressive in your ball screen defense. Young back to defending Carter. Back to Wells. Good read by AM to attack Abby Prohaska. See, Gary Blair is like having a point guard on the sideline. It's almost like six offensive players because he's got the tempo where he wants. He can just dial it up. Wagumbawale, yes. Arike now at 20. She takes a lot of tough shots, but she makes a lot of tough twos. 10 for 19 today, so she and Shepard over 20. Final minute and a half of the third quarter. Got the ISO. Carter over Young. No. Agumbawale's got it and a foul. I'm really surprised that Carter didn't put that one on the deck and take Jackie Young off the bounce. She had the whole side of the floor to herself. And she is a tremendous one-on-one -on -one player. She can get separation off any defender in the country, including the best defender for Notre Dame. Maybe that's what Gary Blair is explaining to her right now. Nagumba Wale hits on the first. Don't forget Sports Talk tonight after Top Ranked Boxing with John Anderson and Kevin Connors. Uh, Kevin Connors. All the latest from the women's Sweet 16, as well as the men's Elite 8, Tiger and Rory on the golf course, all coming up tonight on Sports Center. Women's Elite 8 tomorrow with Louisville, Yukon, and Mississippi State, Oregon. And then on Monday night, Baylor, Iowa. And the winner of this game against the winner of our second game coming up, Stanford and Missouri State. Carter, how about that off the bounce? How about turning the corner? Ooh, wow. She can go. 28 now for Kennedy. So can Enrique. Good weak side box by Washington. Good job by Mabry, get a little deflection. Now Mabry's got something to say to Kennedy Carter. Look at that, turn the corner, explosion to the rim. Oh, now Jackie Young trying to pull Mabry away a little bit. I think Car Carter just pointed to the scoreboard and said, hey, I got 28. <laughs> and we're only down four. Uh-oh, watch out Mabry. Carter pulling Mabry away, a couple of crosses. Bumped by Mabry, count it. Yes, not yet, not you, yet, not yet. They're gonna talk about it. You gotta count that. And... No, they're not gonna count it. Wow, watch this. There's a foul, okay, yes, yeah, that's no, the right good call. call. Good call. How exciting was that bucket though? Second on Mabry. I said 37, Beth. Remember I said 37 at the... She said, yep, yeah, take a check up there right now. I said 37. I'm on a shoulder short. Well, it's, it's 28. There's still you know, fourth okay. quarter to go. We'll see. The over-under. Scored 31 on the Irish last year. You know, this is a repeat. A year ago, Notre Dame knocked a and out. And route to the national championship. 
can essentially hold for one shot here. No Carter on the floor. Washington fouled on the drive with 6.5 to go. Going to be on Jackie Young, her first. Could be some cramping possibly over there for Carter. Has played uh, 27 of the 29 minutes so far. I did ask her before the game what she had to eat because, you know, she's not the best to eat her. I think she just turned down the banana, which, you know, it's good to <laughs> she had, if you, now you get the muscles uh, worked up again. How about uh, some uh, Rice Krispies is what she told me before the game. Getting hydrated. Could be a significant development. Agumbawale, we know she can beat a buzzer. Not this time. Ten minutes to go for a spot in the Elite Eight. The Irish over the Aggies by three. There you go, Kennedy. We're joined now by Notre Dame head coach Muffet McGraw. Coach, your offense, what do you want to see in the last 10 minutes offensively from your group? I'd like to go inside a little bit more. For Kennedy Carter, what ch changes do you have to make defensively to slow her down? Yeah, we, we, we have no option. We, we can't guard her. She's absolutely unguardable. We're, we're completely unaware of help defense concepts of somebody stepping out on the screen. So we just got to hope she misses. Thank you. Oh, the honesty from Muffet McGraw as we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, the unguardable Kennedy Carter. If your players don't think they can guard her, don't worry about it, because Kennedy Carter already knows they can. And she has done a fantastic job in any action, and Gary Blair has her in front of his bench so that she can do this. Comes off the ball screen at the top of the floor with the floor space. Oh, boy. She sees the second level so well. And look at the circles are the makes. Ooh. The X's are the misses. And you can see on the right side of the floor, she has been terrific outside the arc. She has six of nine from the three-point line. Wow, uh, you down with Kennedy? Yeah, you know me. She's dropping 28 right now on the Irish. Will it be enough as we are underway in the fourth quarter? Or can Notre Dame figure out how to survive in advance? And it's now a one-point game and a free throw to knot it up. A transition bucket for Texas A&M. Nice pump fake. Good job by Kayla Wells to get ahead of the basketball in transition. Usually Notre Dame's a team that converts so quickly from defense to offense. All chalk so far in the Sweet 16. All the ones and two seeds winning and advancing. Most with ease, but right now the Irish with their hands full against Texas A&M. Shepard. Denied by Johnson. See, when the Irish go one-on-one -on -one like that in the quarter court, I don't think they're as dangerous. And here's the issue for A&M. It's not even an issue, really. It's what they've done is they've scored with the Irish, got the tempo where they want it. You make Notre Dame take it out of the net. They're not so dangerous in their transition game. And you got a player like this, Kennedy Carter, who's got 30 to start the fourth quarter. Remember, Gary Blair said we need to get into their collar. They're under it right now. A two-point lead over the one seed. Young on the drive, got it. Really good take. And Jackie Young has not been seeking shots. Maybe she needs to start. The defending champs with five potential WNBA draft picks on the floor right now. Can they figure out a way to slow down Carter? Johnson, good post up and Agumbawale makes sure the foul is on the deck. You know what, that, that's not a bad foul by Enrique, only because that's a layup, and now you force, your, at least you can set your defense, because she's totally wrapped up, Sierra Johnson. Second on Agumba, uh, Agumbawale, neither side has anybody in foul trouble as we enter the fourth. Carter, no. Johnson had it, and the Irish will get it. Washington with the foul going for the loose ball. 
Wow, another big collision. Hey, this is a chance to play for the Elite Eight. This is where all the detail matters, the toughness, the extra. It's been a while for Notre Dame. They have won 11 games in a row by an average of 30 points. Oh. Haven't been in a nail biter in a while. And they've averaged 95 points in those 11 consecutive wins since their loss on the road to Miami. Young gets the inbound yep. from Mabry. Back to back buckets for Jackie Young. And she's been on Carter. Let's see if she can dig in right here and get a little help. Carter goes baseline. Pull up no. And another foul on Texas AM going for the loose ball. That'll be on India Jones, and now they've got some foul problems. Jones has just picked up her fourth. So a starter goes out. Well, remember, guys, too, Texas A&M is without Kaylin Martin today. She twisted her ankle in practice yesterday, so their depth down low is limited. In fact, they've only got nine minutes off their bench through the first three quarters. Mabry for three. Turner able to knock it loose. Well, there's a lot of contact around the rim and post-up opportunities on both sides. They haven't called any of those fouls yet. Let's hope they don't start calling them now. Carter on the inbound. That won't go. Offensive rebound, and the stick back is good from Asia Ellison, just in off the bench. Asia Ellison averages one point. She's doubled it. And we are tied again at 69. Agumbawale gets a free look, and it's the three. That's just their second of the day. Now you know that Arike is not afraid of this moment right here. She thrives on this kind of opportunity for her team. Jackie Young chasing Carter off screening action. Turner, that time they had good help on the screen and they get the turnover. Agumba Wale breaks away. Gary Blair Turn says, about AM and Gary Blair says, why wasn't there a foul on that screen? I think he was trying to get a timeout down there in the corner. He had to run out onto the court to be able to get the timeout. How about the help defense from turnover and then the turnover? Then the breakaway. Is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Oh, Chicago fertile Irish territory for Notre Dame. Even 30 busloads coming in from South Bend for this one. And it's a 5 0 Arike Agumba Wale run to put the Irish on top. Just as we had expected, Debbie. Showcase for Carter and Arike, and for Jess Shepard. And this one is not disappointed for a spot in the Elite Eight. Winner will get Stanford or Missouri State on Monday night. Triangle and two. Jackie Young has got the no catch responsibility for Carter. Just what Notre Dame wanted, a shot that was not from Kennedy Carter. And the, during that last time out, Gary Blair talking to his team about energy and effort. He said they just made three hustle plays. So what happens next? We got to respond. You got to hustle. They tried to lob to Turner. A&M comes out with it. Really good job of defending the ATO after timeout. In the open court, Carter long on the shot attempt. The leak out for Agumbawale was 17 here in the second half. 
And she'll slow it down for the Irish with a roommate Mabry up top. Didn't you just say Enrique slowed it down? How about I, that? I did. I can't believe that myself. I think it's only temporary, Debbie. Well, I think it's the right play, though, right now. Yeah. Except for now there's 10 on the shot clock. And the Irish late getting into their set. Enrique time launches way off the mark shot clock violation. So not a good Notre Dame possession. Yeah, and see, look at Muffet McGraw. See, they slow it down. You make them execute in a quarter court. That's exactly what Gary Blair wants, and his defense held that possession. That's the old point guard in her right there. Disappointed that no one took charge of that possession. And a chance for AM. Carter running the baseline, defended by Young. Washington. That is two possessions in a row where Carter does not get a look. And That's they a, come up empty. Good job by the Irish not to let her touch the ball. That's Jackie Young defending. And the third personal foul on Carter. Really nice job of uh, Jackie Young of running her off that screen. Young with a catch down low. Good job by the Irish to call that. Really good at inverting their perimeter players to the block so that they can score with their size and their strength. 7-0 run. Kennedy wants a look this time down the floor. They haven't scored in three minutes. Carter will get a look, coming off the corner hot again. 32 for Kennedy. A&M runs good stuff for her. Really good offensive execution. And a finisher in Carter. She has hit her season high, 32 points. Her fourth 30-point postseason game in the last two years. Agumbawale going to work on Kennedy, will pull up, and one, and the fourth foul on Carter. Shot maker on shot maker. Bam, crossover, a little push off, just enough. Where's the foul? I didn't think Kennedy, Car no. Kennedy Carter was close enough to her to draw a foul. Good break there for Notre Dame. Carter will go out, 3.14 to play. No, she's just going to the corner of the court. Ogumbawale. for Enrique in a huge second half. Carter clears herself out of the play. Still way out top. She was not involved in that offensive set at all and might be starting to get a little tired. Kennedy spinning and Enrique with the reach. Third on Agumbawale. The team third foul. Neither side shooting free throws yet. Carter's got to work hard to get this ball in her hands. But, but Washington wasn't ready to give it to her the last nope. time. That wasn't her fault. Washington, the pass down low, good ball fake. Jones missed the gimme. They run their chin, their Princeton gets them moving. Under 10 on the shot clock. Coming up to two on the game clock. Shepard with the deep catch and the block. 
two on the shot. Well, you run this for Jackie Young. Watch for Jackie Young, number two in white for this play. Carter will depart. She needs to catch her breath for the final push. Number five in white, Jackie Young. It goes to Turner. No. And Kennedy will check right back in. Her body language is not the best right now. Let's see if she's got the gas left in the tank. That's the rope dope Beth. Let's see. She's just lulling you to sleep Let's right see. now. She's 12 for 32. Here she is looking for the three. Got it. That didn't look tired to me. Now you got to get a stop if you're A&M. One thirty to go. No fouls to give. Young unattended at the elbow. Carter coming off the screen. Got Young on her defensively. Another three. Way short. A&M gets it right back, and then Agubuale with the steal. Arike the other way. Got it. The miscommunication between Wells. And I think they just called a technical foul on Arike. They did. A this is short. A, this is a big change. A&M gets Wells it right back. That Washington's going to pick it up, and then Arike drives. And then talks a little trash for taunting. I mean, she's going to get called for the foul, which means that's going to be two shots for A&M and the ball. Third foul on Agumba Wale, 55 seconds to go. Stops the clock, chance to put two points on the board. That's a personal foul for Enrique as well. So you're looking at what could be a five point play right here. Couple free throws and a three, maybe. And that will be the fourth foul on Agumawale. The two free throws, and then AM will get the ball opposite table. Opposite the scores table over here on this side, and they will have a chance, Beth, for another possession. Timeouts left for AM. Remember in the women's game, you can call a timeout and advance to midcourt when we get down to the final seconds here if they need to. Big free throws for Wells. Our point of interruption is where the ball comes inbounded, which is where AM had it. And Gary Blair doesn't want to use his timeout here. He's got a chance to use this time with a technical. As, as a timeout with his team. Carter on the wing, near side. Kennedy, baseline, gives it up wide open underneath Sierra Johnson. Full court pressure, no fouls to give. Young, you can play really good defense here, Beth. They get it across and a quick foul on Agumba Wale with 31 seconds to go. Don't forget Notre Dame's uh, ice hockey team is looking for a spot in the Frozen Four. They'll face UMass tonight at 6.30 on ESPNU. So Enrique to the line. Huge second half. A free throw here for a new career high of 33 points. Going toe to toe with Kennedy Carter, who's got 35. Gary Blair might burn a timeout here to advance the ball when he's yep. going to. And I like that Muffin McGraw did not use her timeout to advance the ball so they could go against the full court pressure and open up the floor. Some coaches don't like to advance the ball in that situation. 
Well, coverage of the D1 Men's Basketball Championship Regional Finals continues tomorrow on CBS at 2 o'clock. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Uh, disappointing news to see that Auburn and Chumo Kiki with the ACL, so he will be out against Kentucky tomorrow. Well, it's time now to take a look at our Google Cloud highlights. And a whole lot of Arike here in the second half. Oh, she did a great job of using her bounce to get to the mid-range jumper, her ability to get to the rim, her post-up ability as well. Arike is going to score. She's not looking for the assist. And she has had a terrific offensive game, putting that fourth foul right there on Kennedy Carter. 22 in the second half for Agumbawale. Time running out on AM, looking for three. Rebound, Brianna Turner. AM's got a foul. Are they electing not to foul? Trying to get to Young, and they finally do. What a game by Kennedy Carter. Boy, she's left her mark on the NCAA tournament in two years, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. That's going to be a heck of a team next year. They got everybody coming yeah. back. It's a top 10 team for Gary Blair next year. Jackie Young adds to the Notre Dame lead. Trying to get to the region final. And when Notre Dame had a little pressure on them, they made the plays. And I know Muffin McGraw is not happy with their defense, but you've got to score with the Irish. Yeah. It was a 5-0 run there by Agumbawale in that fourth quarter that got him a little breathing room. And now the nine-point lead with 13 seconds to go. Reminder coming up, we've still got Stanford and Missouri State in the last of the Sweet 16 matchups. Alana Smith and the Cardinal getting revved up. Can the Lady Bears continue their run with Danielle Gibson and Alexa Willard. It's been a rough sweet 16 for the underdogs. They're over. All the ones and two seeds have been winners so far. And it looks like Notre Dame will be able to continue that trend. I'd say about 80% Notre Dame in yes. here. Yes. Terrific turnout here at Wintrust Arena in Chicago. And a lot of them hoping that the Irish can hold here and they can come back on Monday. Survive in advance. That's what you do. And, you know, as Muffin McGraw told Courtney in her interview, she wasn't pleased with her defensive effort. But Kennedy Carter's a lot to deal with. There's not many that can hold her down. They got a big stop on Carter when Turner came over for the double team down on the baseline and a breakaway layup for Agumbawale the other way. Wells, baseline, good. And the Irish will call a timeout that Muffet McGraw did not appear to want. But she'll take it. Well, she's just frustrated that her team can't get the ball in bounds. Big fourth quarter for Agumbawale, 12 here in the fourth. Shepard and Turner all day long. Jess with 24, Turner with 12, six rebounds and four blocks. Were you entertained? Because I was. That was an incredible offensive performance by Kennedy Carter and Enrique Agumbawale. Two of the better scoring guards and I've often remarked about Kennedy Carter. I don't think the SEC has seen a guard like her since Saudi Roundtree, who played for Andy Landers and helped Andy Landers to a national championship game in 1996. That's over 20 years ago. And the inbound, and the Irish will be able to run out the clock. The top seed here in Chicago advances to the region final, 87 to 80 as they knock out Texas A&M for the second year in a row. Thirty-five for Carter, thirty-four, a new career high for Agumbawale. And the Irish advance. And the 
quest continues for a second consecutive national championship. Too much offense. Too many dangerous offensive players in Notre Dame advances. They'll take on the winner of Stanford and Missouri State coming up next. Career high for you, 34 points. What was it about this game that Texas, how did Texas A&M challenge you guys? I mean, they're a fast, you know, they're a fast team and we like up-tempo games, but they match that, so it was just an up and down game and you know, they have great players, but we came out on top. What did you learn about your team in this game that allowed you to get a win in a close situation in the Sweet 16? Well, we had fight. I already knew we had fight, but we definitely showed it today, and we just got to keep carrying that through, through the tournament. What's it like going against a player like Kennedy Carter? I mean, she's an All-American, or she will be one day. I mean, she's a great player, you know, skills. She can get to the basket, she can shoot, she has it all, so she's going to be really good. How much did this crowd affect your performance tonight? It's like a home game in here. Yeah, our fans really came out. We had a lot of, you know, people back from back home, so their energy really helped us in the tight game. Congratulations. Thank you. Agumuwale and Kennedy with big days, and it's the Irish who survive and advance to the region final. Now let's get you back to the studio with Maureen again.